So I've got a client who wants a, a rustic looking mantle to be made from scratch. So without further ado, I'm going to get on with this. I hope that you learn something from this, or at least if not, I hope you enjoy it. So I started with 16 quarter walnut, a nice thick piece of hardwood. Heartwood is what I meant to say. Really nice piece. I figure it just made sense to cut it with the handsaw. I don't keep a chop saw in the shop very often. I have one, but I, I find it. I just don't have the room for a tool that big that I only use occasionally. With the handsaw and then using this uh, handheld belt sander, I can clean up a, an end and it does a fine job. Granted, the chop saw would be quick and easy, but I just can't justify the space it takes up. I'm working on the floor here. My workbench isn't the greatest. It's not solid. So to work on a big piece like this, you know, to take this number five Stanley jack plane, the, the bench unfortunately will be wobbling around and that's just not any fun. Jack Blink probably is sharpening now too. It's been a little while since I've touched it up. I was going for a wavy look, so as I mentioned earlier, it's supposed to look rustic. And I thought I could use this two inch gouge to carve a wave contour surface. But it didn't work out the way I was hoping. I was planning on carving it out and then just giving it a light sanding, but this is me recognizing that it's not going as I had hoped it would, and this is me saying, okay, not working. So I had to come up with another plan. So I decided to, to use the draw blade. A draw knife is a really handy tool for a lot of things. I, I find though, I, I know how it's sharpened. I know that you have to put a small counter bevel on the back side of the blade so you can have control. But I don't know if if the contour of my blade is too convex, but I find it doesn't cut as easily as I think it should. Anyway, if anyone has comments on that, please feel free to give me some insight. So this was going pretty well. I was able to create some nice wavy organic contour. But I got a little carried away right here. And see how that's curling off a little bit thick and right there I dug too deep unfortunately and I, I don't know why I didn't notice it as I was doing it so here I am using the thickness planer I didn't want to use the thickness planer that's why I had the Stanley out earlier uh, because it's, it's not really a very high-end thickness planer and the, the, the rollers just can't push that piece through but because I dug so deeply accidentally with the draw knife, I had to I had to take a lot off. And with the plane, it would have just taken forever. So here I am now smoothing out the organic curves that I that I carved with the draw knife. You can't really tell until just toward the end of this shot. But another reason I didn't want to use the thickness planer is because of the the snipe that it creates. You can just sort of see it where my hand is resting and an opposite side at the other end. There's a little dip. Now you can see it on the left side. There's a little dip in the wood because the mantle was already cut to length so I couldn't factor in any extra length for snipe. Now I'm making the deck portion to go on top of the main piece. This is four quarter walnut again. I like the figure in that, it, the, the transition from sapwood to heartwood is quite nice in these pieces. Cutting it to length on the crosscut sled. I don't remember if it was 4S or two-sided, it was partially dressed anyway. So I was able to just throw it on the table saw and get a flat edge. It may not have been perfect, but it was reasonable. And then I can take it back to the 
the bench and uh, plane it out nice and smooth. Make sure it's flat. Always, whenever you plane, always check for square. I was finding just the end for some reason wasn't quite square, so I got the block plane out. I like that little Veritas low angle block plane. I like it a lot. I use it all the time. The jack plane I inherited, uh, well, my wife inherited from her father, my father in law. And it's kind of funny, his name is Jack too, so it's Jack's jack plane. Because it's so cold and my garage isn't heated, I use polyurethane glue. Um, I'm not necessarily a big fan of it. I don't particularly dislike it, except for the fact that it foams when it cures. And that's a real pain. With wood glue, you can just wipe it clean while it's still wet. And then you don't have to worry about it again. Whereas with, with polyurethane glue, no matter how clean you wipe it, when you come back in 24 hours, it still manages to bubble up and foam. But, again, getting back to it, the, because the garage is not heated where I work, wood glue, it was just too cold. Polyurethane glue is good down to, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 2 degrees Celsius. So that's why I opted for the polyurethane glue. Rather than build a panel to make the deck surface, I simply glued the first piece on, and then once that was cured, then I glued the second piece on. This is a cove piece I made for the bottom, and I sort of jumped out of order here. I decided to go ahead and cut this cove, which is a piece that will attach to the bottom, and you'll see what I mean by that a little later. Here's the foaming I was talking about with the polyurethane glue. It's really annoying. I had to go chisel that out slowly and carefully. It's so easy, to, you, have to, you have to be patient because it's so easy to push a little too hard and then mar the surface of the wood. So you have to be careful. It's the only real drawback that I can think of for polyurethane glue. Otherwise it's I mean, otherwise, it's actually technically a little bit better than wood glue because it, it does a much better job attaching end grain than wood glue does. Here I am putting a bevel on the top deck piece. I thought about doing it with a router as well. But the table saw is always handy. cleaning up the saw blade marks with the uh, jack plane. I highly recommend that, that little Veritas jack plane. If, if you haven't noticed, I really like it. Of course, there was flattening and sanding that went into this as well that's not shown here. For the deck because it it wasn't actually a panel but two pieces of course I had to plane and sand that nice and smooth after cutting the cold touching up a little bit with the, with the skill saw or pardon me with the jigsaw and then smoothing it out with a spoke shave that spoke shave is just a low quality just at your local hardware store spoke shave. I'm gonna ha I definitely have to upgrade. I have to get a couple of decent ones. But it's technically better than nothing for now. Putting a chamfer on the cove piece. Obviously being extremely careful. Watch your fingers here.
cutting the cove piece to length. Sometimes I switch back between pencil and striking tool. The striking knife is very accurate of course, but I mean, you can manage with a pencil as well. Adding chamfers to the ends after, after cutting the curved piece to size. Pocket hole screws are really, really handy. If the weather were warm, I would have glued the piece, I would have glued and clamped it, but the weather's not warm, so I decided to do pocket screws instead. This Craig Jig, is it F Craig 5? Pocket hole Jig 5, whatever they call it. It's the number 5 anyway. Having the clamp in the front toward you, in front of the workpiece, is, is a lot handier than on the four and the previous where you had to reach around the workpiece to clamp it down. I guess they've got their new 720 Pro that's just come out. I haven't looked at it really because I know that if I do I'll probably want it, so. Measuring it for the center of the cove piece to match that up with the center of the mantle so I can attach it. I don't want any gap, I wanted to, to have a nice tight fit as though it were glued. And I put this piece of hickory on there and clamped it. If I didn't clamp that down, the screws might pull that cove piece forward a little bit and it wouldn't sit back flush. So by clamping that piece of hickory there, that just holds it in place. Turning it over and now it's, it's complete. Thanks Sarah and Paul for requesting this piece, it was really a, it was really a pleasure to make it for you.